Well, it looks like Intel's got a bit of a trick up its sleeves to help boost performance of its CPUs and gaming that utilize their hybrid architecture. According to some of the numbers online, you could be looking at a double-digit performance improvement. Sounds great, right? Well, unfortunately, there is a catch here, and it's a decision that I personally think Intel should not have indulged in. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to make this video for you guys to give you my input on this Intel APO situation. As someone who uses an i9-13900K for my test bench and has tested various configurations and games, I'm not surprised to see Intel come out with a tool like this, but it's how they're behaving given their current place in the market which raises some concerns. A little over a month ago, Intel's 14th gen desktop CPUs had hit the market and as people had expected, it was a big fat nothing burger. I mean, it was literally in the name of the product, Raptor Lake Refresh. But in terms of performance, nothing has really changed here as what you're looking at is plus 100 to 200 megahertz. With the i7, you got four more e-cores, so maybe you can look at that as an improvement in value if you really care about that stuff. Though apart from the i7, there really wasn't any substantial differences worth talking about. Obviously, as expected, they weren't reviewed positively either, with most reviewers calling them pointless or a quick cash grab, for the sake of just having something new on the market. Now, I urge you all to always go and look at as many reviews as possible. There's plenty of benchmarks out there comparing the 14th gen to 13th gen and also to AMD, so you can make an informed decision based on what works for your needs. What I would suggest looking at is discounted deals for the 13th gen CPUs, and right now with Black Friday and holiday sales, there's been some really steep discounts on 12th gen Alder Lake parts as well, and they're absolutely fantastic, still very capable. Over on Amazon, you can pick up a 12th 700 kf for just $200 and you get a really powerful 8 core CPU with 4 e cores to help with multi-threading tasks all around a beast of a CPU at an impeccable value. Affiliate links are down below if you're interested. What I wanted to mainly discuss was this new tool that Intel released alongside their 14th gen CPUs called Application Optimizer or APO for short. When I saw this I was initially quite intrigued by it and also pleased that you know Intel has released something like this for the end user. Anything that helps improve performance is a welcome addition but you'll see how as we look deeper into it the reason why there's been so much controversy surrounding surrounding it. Now, for those of you not in the know, how Intel's APU works is that it determines and directs applications in real time. According to Intel, it optimizes thread scheduling along with application threading for selected software titles. Now, given Intel's description of this, APO to me sounds like a revised thread director or something that's a bit of an add-on. If you go and take a look at how ThreadDirector works, there's a lot of similarities here, and ultimately both come down to making the OS and hardware work together to intelligently manage threads. The reason why this is so crucial on modern Intel CPUs is because they utilize a hybrid architecture consisting of large P cores and smaller efficient E cores. Now, for heavy applications and games, you want those to run on the P cores because they clock higher and have higher IPC, so performance is going to be much better on those cores, whereas for background, tasks, it's better if they're offloaded to the e-cores. Some reviewers have gone ahead and tested Intel's APO, and as of now, the software, it only supports two games, which are Metro Exodus and Rainbow Six Siege. Gamers Nexus tested both and found a fairly substantial performance improvement. However, when I saw these results, I was like, hold on a minute, this seems familiar. So earlier this year, I made a video using my 13700K where I benchmarked 40 games with eCores enabled and then disabled to find which configuration offered the best gaming performance. This was because I had often heard many people say they experienced better performance once the eCores were turned off. However, based on my testing using Windows 11, I found that overall performance was actually better in most titles with eCores enabled. But there was one game which had shown a notable performance improvement with eCores disabled and that game was Metro Exodus. Now I never tested Rainbow Six Siege for that video, but I did test Rainbow Six extraction and found that performance differences between the two configurations was negligible. Then just last month I made a video this time using my 13900K and benchmarked 40 games again to see if disabling hyper threading with the e core still enabled would improve or hurt gaming performance and found that most games did actually benefit from having hyper threading disabled though the margins for the vast majority of games wasn't anything huge. However once again we saw Metro Exodus was an exception and it shows us 
a noteworthy performance improvement with hyperthreading disabled. Along with that, Rainbow Six Extraction also showed a pretty noteworthy bump in performance with hyperthreading off as well. Given the results from my own testing, it makes a lot of sense that Metro Exodus and Rainbow Six would be two games they have approved for their APO software to boost gaming performance. Clearly, these titles benefit from having it intervene and manage thread scheduling to ensure the game is ran on just the P cores along with ignoring the E cores and that the hyper threading aspect of the CPU as well is ignored. So when I saw people testing APO and was reminded of these results, I was quite pleased to see that because instead of having to mess around with settings in your BIOS, which a lot of people tell me they just don't like to do aside from enabling their XMP, it will make your life much easier by having this software in the OS that can do that for you in a specific game. When manufacturers bring software features like this to the table to boost performance, it's great for everyone, especially the normies who don't tune their systems. We've seen stuff like this from NVIDIA, we have seen stuff like this from AMD with HyperRX, a one-click tuning option to boost performance. People seem to really love this kind of stuff, and I think with APO, Intel did take a step in the right direction. However, where Intel completely missed the mark was with hardware support. As of now, APO is only compatible with 14th gen i9s and i7s, which is really baffling if you ask me because I think lower core count CPUs like the i5 would probably benefit more from something like this given that there's less threads to spare. Along with that, what makes this even more scummier is the fact that Intel told Hardware Unboxed they have no plans to bring APO to prior generation products. So even though 14th gen is basically 13th gen with a new badge, they're not going to support it because of what? Money? Greed? So let me get this straight, Intel. You get shat on by all the reviewers who called your 14th gen pointless and were further ridiculed for how terrible you looked against the competition when it comes to efficiency, but then you had a chance to actually gain some positive press by making a feature people would find useful, but then you paywall it behind the 14th gen i9 and i7 for no apparent fucking reason. You've lost a whole bunch of market share over the years in the DIY space, you're getting your ass kicked in servers, but then decide, hey, let's just dig ourselves a deeper hole by pissing off our existing user base. I'd love to know the logic behind that decision because I can't seem to figure it out. It's as I said before, these days to these manufacturers, it's not just about selling the fastest and most powerful hardware, but also the software features and the experience you can offer your user. You take a look at a company like Nvidia, sure the RTX 40 series also wasn't received positively aside from the flagship for the hardware you got, but in terms of the software experience you get with Nvidia, that alone makes it very desirable for a lot of people. When AMD came out with the 7800 XT and their announcement of FSR 3, HyperRX, these were features people were excited about. The whole aspect of a one-click tuning option within the driver seems to appeal to a lot of users because, as I mentioned, not everyone is doing deep tuning, but with a feature like that, everyone on 12th, 13th, and 14th gen could use it, and it'd definitely give them a lot of positive press for sure. Circling back to Thread Director and APO going hand-in-hand, by utilizing a hybrid architecture like this, you also adopt the caveats that come with it, which is ensuring thread management and core handling is appropriately handled. By updating and optimizing these things, don't you think you'd ought to give these improvements to everyone who's gotten these CPUs over the last few years? These users were intrigued and adopted this platform to see the whole benefits and performance advantages of this architecture. I'm glad to see that reviewers who tested APO called out Intel on their anti-consumer decision, and hopefully they take something out of it and aren't ignorant to the fact that this paywall isn't actually going to help them with their sales. So for the users on 13th and 12th gen CPUs, fortunately you're not actually out of luck here, but you will have to go through a bit of manual tuning yourself. As mentioned earlier, I've tested the different configurations with e-cores and hyperthreading, and all this stuff you can actually do yourself with the BIOS. I've also heard many users use a program called Process Lasso that will allow you to manually handle the thread management yourself within Windows if you don't want to go through the trouble of disabling and re-enabling stuff within your BIOS. Now, I don't know how well this works works or to what extent it'll boost performance as I haven't tested or used it myself. I do plan on doing that in the near future with some benchmarks, just currently have some other videos I'm working on. So what I suggest is if you've got a bit of time, it might be worth just benchmarking the games yourself with these configurations and find what works best for you. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna do it for this one. Hope you all learned something. I'll catch you in the next one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.